At the start of this year, 2006, I was asked to investigate sightings of giants, apparently dwelling in southeast Kent. As a giant myself, I knew at first hand the habits of these creatures. I set off with my assistant, who rather conveniently had trained in the profession of filmmaking. Our first stop was Hearn Bay, where we encountered a pair of fish, presumably taking a break from the cold of the North Sea. Long ago, giants lived not in Kent, but in France. One giant in particular was a regular visitor to Kent, stepping over the channel to steal crops and animals. The fish interrupted my train of thought by making a fuss, and so my assistant and I dropped them and pushed on. Where is the pier? Every seaside resort must have a pier. In times past, the pier at Home Bay had been the centre of entertainment, and my assistant told me his feet were itching to dance. My spectacular height gave me an advantage in spotting the pier from a great distance, and so my assistant's opportunity to take part in a pas de deux was not to go unrequited. As we stared at what is left of the pier, my assistant recounted its history. The first pier was eaten by bugs, Latin name Limnoria terebans, otherwise known as gribbles. Throughout its existence, he said, Herne Bay Pier was continually rebuilt, being destroyed twice by sea and once by army engineers. Luckily, my assistant was able to resurrect our holiday dinghy and paddle out to the dance hall. I let him have the afternoon off because I had other things on my mind. As a man of the internet, I followed the crowd. Discreet inquiries revealed her name to be Lily, Queen of Herne Bay. I thought it better to stay at a respectful distance and remain incognito. Later, on her birthday, I sneaked a photograph. We left Herne, stepped over Canterbury to avoid the traffic, and settled on the downs. Choosing the vantage point near the town of Wye, some distance from our second recorded sighting of the giant. I had decided to keep a lower profile in our investigation. My assistant had a remote viewing device, which he pointed in the direction of Singleton, a small hamlet on the boundary of the former Weald of Kent. Singleton Sally, Sapphire and Jill Giant with a bed on her shoulder. He told me this huge ancient forest once stretched from here to Hampshire. The edges of the forest in Kent were a grazing area for pigs on common land known as dens. Lizard coming down, which shows that um, it's all about nature and. With the help of an ear trumpet, we were able to listen in on the discussions about naming the singleton giant. Spiky dress, lizard Lizzie, and daffodil, rose. Lucy Lockett, Karen, a red dress, dress and a necklace, Sally, and this got a zigzag on its chest. 
and I like that one because it's got a necklace and it's got what's happening in the woods on its skirt. You can tell it's a tree because its legs are roots and the um, body is a trunk. After a lengthy debate, she was christened Flora and pronounced a lady of the forest. Leaving Wye, we diverted through Lipney on the hills overlooking Romney Marsh. Here, my assistant was able to obtain a large sheet of caverite, named after its inventor, Cavor, who went to the moon in the novel by H.G. Wells. Caverite is a rare substance which is opaque to gravity. This means objects or people placed on a sheet of the material have no weight. I believed him, and travelling in this way allowed us to leap through time straight to Hawkinge, where glimpses of a giant had of late been occurring. My assistant guessed that recent events had left a shadow on the village. What I always remember is um, the flight path often was across our bungalow, and you'd see the young pilot sitting in there, you could have waved to them. To find out, we spoke to Joan, a long-term Hawkinge resident, about her experiences. The thing was with the Germans, they were here bombing us before we knew it. The siren was going as Hawkins Airfield was being bombed because it, how far was it from Calais? Just up over the escarpment and they were at Hawkins. Yes, they just, they came in over Folkestone and just up over the hill, you see. The Hawkins giant was a slippery creature and did not reveal himself easily. I sent out my assistant with the camera to try to track him down. Yes, we had some people come and stay with us and his name is on the airfield, Honor Close. Well, that was Flight Sergeant Honor, he lived with us during the war. We had 